Hello, my fantastic and fantastic anti. I'm going to be talking about building a phenomenal team for Alterina 2 using Phenom and Ina. So I was actually quite fortunate in the past several events and I actually acquired both of these cards. And in all honesty, you only need one of those, but by having both, I have the option of choosing my inherits more easily and or pairing of friends, so on and so forth. But the point of the matter is the two of them combine together to lead one of the strongest teams available in Puzzle and & Dragons. And I do have a clear video of Alterina 2 on my YouTube channel as well. You can also watch that there. But I want to go into further detail as to why I chose the subs and the rationale behind the team I built on the right-hand side. So... In Alterina 2, you need to plan out your team composition. You can't just enter blindly because you're most likely going to get pounded hard by all the ridiculous mechanics. So before I enter any dungeon, I usually have some sort of mental checklist, and I listed these all out. This is not necessarily an exhaustive summary of everything you need, but I feel that like these are the things that are most important that you should be trying to prioritize. And they include a damage absorption, so a Fujin-style active skill, some sort of Skyfall Jammer Skyfall buff, you can use Fenrir, you can use the Spirit Ally, you can use the skill card Agdenine. I can't pronounce the name, but either way, find one of those types of cards in order to overwrite the Poison Skyfalls that has a 50% chance of occurring. You want to have Skill Delay Resist for those respective cards as well. You need to have VDP and possibly Fall of Attack or Super Fall of Attack, I'm sorry, Fall of Attack and possibly Super Fall of Attack. But because we're playing Phenom and Ina, you completely counter this out completely. You can ignore this. So my team actually doesn't have those two awakenings just because her built-in leader skill covers that. You want 100% blind and poison resist along with clouds, in addition to having Awoken Bind Clears readily available. Furthermore, you need to have at least 162,444 effective HP. So that can be any combination of health multipliers and damage reduction to survive the preemptive on floor two from going on. Being able to address all these issues should give you much more consistent clears overall. Now, why is there no jam resist? Well, in Alterina 2, it is a challenging dungeon. There's so many mechanics you already have to counter and focusing on jammers over something else listed here will most likely end up in more failures than successes in my opinion because I find that these are more important. If you do have a way to get jammer resist naturally without compensating your team composition or inherits greatly then sure go for it but if you have to go out of your way to actually inquire, acquire it it's not necessary. For my team I'm fortunate I actually have 80% which works most of the time. So, looking at these two leaders, so Phenom has a six turn base active skill and creates a row of dark orbs and allows me to reduce unable to match effects by five turns. It's not relevant in this dungeon outside of incredibly niche situations, which shouldn't happen because if you kill it right away, it won't occur. But in future content like Alterina 3, which will come at some point, this will be relevant. But the whole thing is you should look at is it's a six turn active for six dark orbs at a bottom row. Amazing value. Her leader skill gives you bonus health for dark cards, which you're going to have anyways, and then you get plus one combo when matching three out of five colors. So really dark plus two because dark counts as a single color. And because of that, you can overcome combo shields a little bit more easily. In theory, your combo count is not actually hindered by using a dark row because in theory, a row is six orbs, so therefore two combos. With the plus one combo, it compensates and evens itself out. So you're actually not losing combo count. So combo shields shouldn't be too big of a deal for this team. She also comes naturally with all three resists for 20% each, VDP, and gains Cloud via Super Awakenings, which I chose to use because it was the best way for my team to actually acquire Cloud Resist. On the other hand, Ina has a three-turn base cooldown, incredibly strong right there. She creates two Dark Orbs and then one turn of one second bonus Orb Movement Time. That Orb Movement Time actually comes in handy because it gives you more time to obviously match Orbs, which is one thing this team does tend to lack, at least for myself, but it overwrites time debuffs. Furthermore, two turn, sorry, sorry, two Dark Orbs can make it so you do activate. If about six Dark Orbs, you're unlikely to kill most floors, but with those two extra, you might be able to do so because most given boards should have that, provided you also have the Skyfall buff augmentation, which I have on my team. She comes with Dark Rose, so that's why you want to match six. You do have a higher multiplier when matching eight or more, but for most things, you can just get away with six. Or you could just do eight, you can make a six row and two sticking upward, or a VDP if you have nine available. Either way, a row kills most floors, you just need to get a feel for your team composition and whether or not you're hitting those seven combos to trigger those damage awakenings. 
Her leader skill gives you bonus stats to dark attribute cards, reduce damage taken by 25% when above 80% health. That is a little bit of a drawback because you only have this bonus damage reduction when you are basically high health. Once you drop down below or succumb to multi hits, you lose that damage reduction. And that's why you need to have still almost the listed amount of health for Goemon's preemptive because it's a multi-hit and only the first of three hits is actually reduced by 25% and every subsequent hit afterwards deals their full strength. Other than that, main points I want to stress that are valuable in Alterina 2 is that she has built-in follow-up damage. And this is good for actually any dungeon. Basically, if you match six Dark Orbs, you will kill any Resolve Spawn that's brought down to one health. Because Resolve Spawns basically work if that if they're above their health threshold, you hit them down, they won't die, they'll survive one health, and they do something probably lethal and kill you. With Ina, you actually bypass that Resolve mechanic completely because you have 50,000 true damage coming up afterwards. And this is basically the main sole reason why this is an incredibly strong team. You ignore Resolve completely. Spawns of Void and Resolve are now just Spawns of Void. Many dangerous spawns with Resolve are now just regular spawns. You don't have to worry about compensating your matching patterns. You means you also have a much lower dependency on hard orbs. So your board changers and orb changers don't always have to have hard orbs because you don't have to worry about the resolve. That is the single most valuable aspect of this team. And it would not surprise me if Gungo starts churning out more leaders with this type of leader skill because it is such a powerful mechanic and it's probably going to make them very rich. But other than that, this team has high VDP potential because both leaders have VDP. Not very much, but there's still some there. You have incredibly strong durability. You have three times health, 1.5 times RCV, and 25% damage reduction when above 80% health. So you can survive those preemptives, which is what you need to do. You can also easily heal back up because you have a bit of bonus RCV and you are also going to be using the farmable air. You have natural 20% hazard resist. You have fast charging orb changers, which is important because you are an orb hungry leader. And that is one of the major drawbacks of this team. You need you really need six Dark Orbs to truly kill anything. And without those six, you're going to be dealing significantly less damage. So having these fast charging active skills helps provide a steady flow of Dark Orbs along with the Dark Skyfall buffs that you are hopefully going to have on your team. Another drawback is your damage reduction only occurs when above 80% health. It's lost upon multi-hits. It makes it so you really want to heal back up during those periods of time. So basically this is summarizing all the stuff I just talked about here. So for team building. So... That above mentioned list I made for Arena Alt Arena 2, this is how just my two leaders are able to counteract these mechanics, if there are any applicable. And then it's a matter of finding things to fill in afterwards. So I have to find the Jammer Skyfall buffs Fujin style active skill. I do have some VDP. I will want more though. I don't have to worry about follow attack. I will have I have 20% blind and poison resist, so I'm getting there. I already have cloud resist because of Phenom, and then I have the effective, I will be able to get the effective health required assuming I build um, my subs with modest amounts of health and the HP badge. So that's just something to keep in the back of my mind. And then I have three out of my five colors. And that's important because Phenom and Ina pairing gives you light, dark, and water. So all you need is green and red. Again, it's not mandatory to have them, but it just makes it much easier because you're able to get that plus one combo count, which is actually a damage increase in itself. So basically this image is identical to the one on the right hand side, but it's basically Phenom as a leader with Ina. I use Valentine's name, New Year's Yomi, Hiei, and Air. So unfortunately this team is quite luxurious in the sense that it's only one farmable, one seven star Godfest exclusive, 10 stone top rarity card, rare eight, season, eight star cards, seasonals, etc. like. It's not an easy team to build, but again, this is not an easy dungeon. Of course, you may have some components of this team. You can definitely mix and match and swap as needed. I know that Veroa is another strong option, which I don't have. She does bring strong amounts of VDP. She has a fast charging active skill, which heavily floods the board of dark, which would allow me to mix around different active skills. But this is what I have to work with, and I find it works well for myself. I have Tape Resistant Cloud through their Super Awakenings. I get bonus damage from Hiei. Yomi's already Bind Immune, so technically the Cecil Weapon Assist is not as magical. I'm just using it for the stats and the free jammers, so that's why I have 80 instead of 40%, because Trojan Horse gives me another 20. Valentine's Day gets very powerful VDP damage with the VDP. Another thing to keep in mind is you can VDP and a TPA, and her damage will skyrocket assuming you hit those seven or more combos. Hiei has Dragon Killers. 
Valentine's Day has god killers. Those are the most important ones because they allow you to kill various things with relative ease. The devil killers are the next priority afterwards. And there was no really to squeeze it on that are super strong options, but it does add meaningful damage because at least Finanom and Ina both have VDP. So my Jammer Skyfall buff card is the Spirit Ally Tokajuro, and it is the best Jammer Skyfall buff available because it provides team HP and team RCV, which actually gives me a sizable increase in bulk and a modest increase in healing capacity. So if possible, you want to try and find a friend with that inherit if you lack one yourself, which is what I did, which is why it's nice. I had both Phenom and Ina. I can basically pick the one that is most suitable for my composition. And it's placed on Ina in an ideal world because Ina has that short three turn active skill cooldown, so it comes up quick enough. But then you have a nice base active you want to spam on a regular basis anyway, so it's a good place to put your Jammer Skyfall buff overall. He A is the best red card because I feel like it's the strongest option because he has huge VDP damage potential of triple seven combo and VDP. He also gives you 99 turns of dark sky falls, which basically alleviates a large part of the grind, so to speak, of finding enough dark orbs for making that road to sweep each floor. So he's kind of basically best in the slot. <clears throat> Other strong options I've seen are people using plan air, but it's a card I don't have, and I would still use Hiei anyways. Air is farmable, so you should always have her, and she's the best wood card because she's the strongest way to add healing to your team. And that's important because with your 120 to 50,000 health, you want to make sure you can actually replenish it after taking large amounts of damage, which you will. She also comes with an Awoken Bind Clear and a full Bind Clear, so it actually counters the Fuma spawn early on in the dungeon. In fact, I actually have three different sources of Awoken Bind Clearing through Valentine's Nay, New Year's Yomi, and Air, so I have flexibility in modifying my active skills and using them at opportune times instead of being forced to always rely on one specific active skill. Other important aspects to consider is that I like to put Eshamali on my Phenom, and that's a active skill selection some people have questioned me about because it's like doesn't provide resist, doesn't provide hearts. But the thing is, it floods the board of Dark Orbs, which is what I want. I want to have a massive amount of Dark Orbs because I can then VDP and multiple Dark Commas alongside of it to basically one-shot any respective spawn. My burst can come from either using Valentine's Nay or the Yomi's Trielemental Board Changer and then supplementing with either a row on top or the bottom from Phenom or Eshamali. Either way, I want to be able to flood the board. If Yomi's Inherit is not up, I can use Yomi's base active skill to provide enhanced orbs, which is another um, comparable and sizable damage burst, and the time extend means I have enough time to actually form all the respective patterns. Now, the reason why Eshamali, and you might think, well, it's kind of competing with Hiei for Dark Orb Skyfall buffs. It's true. Eshamali is a four turn, but it provides you with a higher Skyfall chance. But again, the board flooding is important. But in this dungeon, there will be times where your um, Skyfall buff will be overridden. There's one floor that's guaranteed to happen against Sumire or Kaede. It will override your debuff, or sorry, override your buff with their debuff. So having a a backup option is actually great because you want to overwrite their debuff with your buff so you actually have hard orbs falling down because if you don't have hard orbs falling down you can't heal and it makes the puppeteer on the next floor impossible to stall through. So having either the delay through Raytheon or this extra skyfall buff chances from Hiei and Eshamali makes it so I can survive the Kaede Sumeri into the puppeteer floor and not actually die. Basically, it's just small nitpicking, but again, I like being able to flood the board of Dark Orbs because you want to have them available because I'm not bringing any carrot or any true burst active skill. So, and again, another point is four of the cards have VDP, so when I really want to hit hard, I make nine Dark Orbs for maximum multiplier and the bonus damage from the VDP, and hopefully I have all those colors around to actually hit the seven or more combos. So now, looking at my team on the right-hand side, Compared to my checklist, I actually have everything checked off now. I'm covering all the important aspects while still having 80% jam resist, which is a happy coincidence, as well as tape resist because air is super waking. There's nothing better to put on it. So in conclusion, Phenom and Ina is truly a phenomenal team because they have built-in follow-up damage, which cancels out all resolve spawns. So many, I mean, basically, Gunther likes to design encounters that throw in multiple difficult components at the same time. And being able to ignore one of them completely for free 
is a big deal. You have much more flexibility in your active skills in terms of board and orb changers. You don't have to always rely on hard orbs, which means your actives do charge up even faster because if you're using something like a Shamali, it's only 10 turns for such a powerful active skill. And this is one of the higher value ones if you look at each component because all of them are valuable. But with that being said, Alt Arena 2 is not necessarily the best dungeon to farm on a regular basis because Arena 5 is more lucrative because it grants more rank experience because there's so many events that provide four times. It also drops two killers, which are arguably better than snow globes, along with being significantly easier and faster to clear because they're much less lethal mechanics and things like Dark Karen and Dark Zeta for myself can clear them tremendously fast. With that being said, let me know what you think about this team in the comments below. Do you think it is overpowered. You think Gunko is going to release more cards with this built-up follow-up attack damage, along with your own team composition and what types of dungeons you have been able to clear. Hopefully you'll have a fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures, and happy puzzling.